What's up, everybody? Today on Make It Cozy, we're gonna make some quick modifications to this sewing machine. Check it out. All right, we're back with another, we'll call it a restoration video for now, but in the meantime, let me just give you a little background on this sewing machine that I bought at auction. This thing was going for a buck, and I said, you know what, let's go ahead and throw a few dollars in there, so I got this guy for four bucks. Four bucks for an antique sewing machine, I thought with nothing else, I could get the motor, and I could also get the sweet looking hand wheel. But then, whenever I actually receive the machine, obviously it needs a little electrical work, uh, the motor needs to be repaired a little bit, but then I realized this, that there is no needle, and that's fine, but it seems like the dude or dudette who had modified this thing did so for a little scroll saw, which I thought was kind of brilliant. And so I was like, huh, that is hilarious. Because clearly this isn't the same motor that came with the machine, especially whenever doing a search on the interweb. They retrofitted it with an old motor up here. Plus, if we look underneath the carriage, there's no gearing whatsoever right in that area. And it's also very dirty. So there's nothing that really would control the bobbin. There should be a switch that would go here or here that would control reverse and, and forward. Uh, that's clearly not there either. Looking at the, the belt, it is quite shoddy. But then I was also looking at this motor, right? If you've seen my restoration video for, whoops, not that. <laughs> Where's it at? Let's look behind the skateboard. Yeah. If you remember this guy, right? This had little pots down below. And I talked about that. So if, you, if you're not familiar, please go watch my scrolling one video. Not scrolling two, Electric Hullabaloo, because that was a fiasco. Uh, but in, it's funny that both of them are scroll saws or air bunnies, scroll saw. But I thought it was hilarious that the guy or gal put this on here. I know how to fix these now. I know what they're for, so we're gonna go into it. And the other thing too that I thought was kind of neat is that they've got, uh, I imagine this is where, you know, for the, for the motor to turn, you've gotta have the commutator brushes. And so this is kind of neat how the commutator brushes are housed in here, I would assume. But, um, but this little guy, right, the bobbin is ba basically useless at this point. So I'm uh, gonna try to clean this up shine it up, spiff it up, and uh, we'll kind of see if some of the stuff in here is actually usable. I mean, clearly the the blade moves back and forth, but let's take a look on the inside here. I mean, clearly this guy spins, right? You can see that rolling. And let's see if we can... I was afraid of that. Yeah, the foot, the foot's not coming up. If you're also checked out my Shibori napkin video, I briefly talked about how I got that guy up and running, which I got at a thrift store for considerably more than this thing. Uh, and I say more air bunnies once again, because I think the thing was 20 bucks. It was probably cheaper. I think I haggled them down to 15 actually, now that I think about it. But the point of the story is, is that we've got another one. It's heavy. It's got a nice base. Let's take a look at, what is this thing? Standard? The American Standard? I don't know. Maybe it's like a French Standard. Because from what I remember in the restoration of the other guy, I'm probably going to need a lot of this. A lot of twine to get the, to floss the grease and, and, and rust out of the, out of the joints. Look at that. Even just a little elbow grease will get it. We'll get that. Whoop. All right, so let's see, let's go in here for Cleveland, Cleveland, Ohio. All right, I'm gonna start getting this a little bit spiffy and then uh, we'll get started on the, <laughs> what would this be, my fourth? My fourth scroll saw? It wasn't even intentional. What's wrong with me? I got a problem with scroll saws apparently. And it's like an unintentional, it's not on purpose. It just, they seem to keep falling in my lap. Just 
Oh, this is just so you don't like, while the mechanism is rolling, you just don't puncture your, your, your noodles here. All right, so that's cool. Let's talk about shaft. So this guy is in here and this, I mean, you could probably even tell between where my fingernail is at the top right here, between here and this part. You could probably see that there's a lot of rubbing going on here, right? It's a little bit dull. This one is kind of shinier because the amount of stuff that was just caked on here was just ridiculous. What I do to get into those parts is I'm not going to try to take all this completely apart, disassemble it, put it in a bath, scrub it down, give it a, you know, I'm not like, this isn't like no bubble bath with wine and cheese and you're reading a book with candlelight. You know what I'm saying? This is like quick and dirty scrubbing, like the, like a sink shower or something. But anyways, I just take a little bit of twine. I got a whole mess of it, but there you go. All you do is just floss it, floss it like your teeth. Sometimes it is a little bit tough to get in here. So what I like to do is I just kind of loop, just take a little loop, push that through and get a, this is just a paper clip, right? And then you want to lube up your shaft. All right. Give it a little bit of, a little bit of lubage and then just do this number right here. And you want to kind of like, you know, I'm using this, this member right here, this little indention just to get, get that situated like so. So you can kind of see, right? This is basically what it looked like. This is a before and after, right? Oh, this rail is really dodgy. So this flossing is doing two things for us. One, it's obviously getting the goo off, but two, you're, you're lubing up the metal, right? So you're getting down to the bare metal and you're lubing it back up. So that way, whenever it's riding inside of its, um, whenever it's riding inside the machine here, you are going to see that it's, you know, moving quite smoothly. So I got some of the pieces free and some of it degunked. I just used some gooiness to degooify it. And even just by degooing, like just, I mean, the, the bed of that piece right there, this guy is a little bit rusty, but I mean, the amount of gunk and grease and dirt that was just in there is just baffling. It's just mind blowing. So I think you know what's coming next. You've seen this video. If not, I'm gonna leave a uh, boop boop. Okay, so, okay, so. Right, we're gonna hit it with the rust bust. Woo, easy there, big fella. The rust bust, before we hit it up on the grinder, because we gotta bust that rust, baby. So there we go, we're gonna de-rustify it, and then we're gonna get it, we're gonna get it rolling, baby. Let's put the cap on it. The super sophisticated cap. See, recycling is fun. This is, uh, this is polypropylene right here. And I am utilizing all my twos because it is HDPE. That's another video. If you haven't seen that already, I do a lot of stuff with HDP. I even made a shredder, so we'll put some links right here. All right, let's go in for the reveal. Uh, some of the some of the shafts were bent, but I got one side. Oh wow, that was a lot easier than I expected. Okay. Here we go. Yuck. Oh yeah, look at those. Look at that carbon, man. That's like turn of the century carbon. That's good stuff right there, buddy. Okay, we got the shaft nice and spiffy, right? It's nice and bright and shiny. We got the copper sanded down. We got the cage sanded, so hopefully... Oh, and the shaft, too, because like it was very difficult to get out of there. But uh, just a little, you know, just a little rubbing on the, on the bing bong made the shaft nice and smooth. So that'll be ready to go back in. So this guy says, yeah, Standard Sewing Machine Company, Cleveland, Ohio. I'll get my finger out of the way so we can focus. And it's got different patents pending. First one up there is January 18 of 89. 
Yeah, I'm not sure what I want to do with this yet. As I as I squirrel into a new into a new thought. Uh, speaking of squirrel, I stuck this tag on it just because I felt like I just felt like it, you know, just like it's old, it's rusty. Going back to my second thought, I was thinking I smoothed this guy up just a little bit, but I kept it. I kept the patina on there, real real dirty like. And I'm thinking what I want to do is I want to try to maybe metal etch, and maybe put like like make it cozy on here like do like a little design or something i think that'd be kind of cool <laughs> these guys these guys are still pending i re i redid some of the the gooey bits with some electrical tape and some crimping i also put the thingy on here and just haphazardly put an on off just so i knew because of course you know you have a 50 50 shot and it's going to be 90 percent the chance that you want it to be in the opposite direction so i wanted this to be off but of course when i plugged it in it went straight to on because that's just how it rolls that's your, that is, those are your chances, man. 50, 50, 90. You have a 50, 50 chance and 90% you're going to get it wrong. All right. I put on a new belt, right? I had a new belt from the other ding dong. I got this guy cleaned up. Uh, obviously the switch is in the back. I couldn't do anything underneath because as much as I tried to oil the screws that held this guy in place, clearly, right? Once you have the feet and everything off, it doesn't really matter. This thing should have come up and I could have gotten aside and <laughs> on the inside of here with like a, like a chimney sweep or something, but that's not going to happen. But I did give a little buffage to the wheel right so the wheel is a little bit gooier i oiled it up i kind of like the i don't know if i want to paint this i don't i don't think so i think i just want to leave it raw in it's you know natural totalitarian state and i also scrubbed these guys a little bit didn't really go all gangbusters on the on the motor obviously but these i was going to give them a little bit buffage and then i thought about it and i was like nah i really like the patina on this one too because it's got that like coppery copperiness but there's some part on it i'm not sure if it's this one yes it is see it's like it's like turning straight up green baby copper yeah so there it is right there that's kind of neat right i kind of like that I, I think i'm just gonna leave it like i would like to just oil it oil it up and just let it go with like a clear coat or something i don't know whatever but my hope was that if i put some motor oil in it Maybe they could like reconstitute, you know, like sometimes like whenever you go to the store and you get like dried mushrooms or whatever, and they're like, oh yeah, just reconstitute it. Or even better, dried Mexican chilies, which, uh, you know, you get like the ancho or the guajillo or whatever, and then you stick them in the water or the chicken stock to reconstitute. That's what I'm trying to do here. It's not working because they are very, ugh, they're so crusty. It's gross. All right. So I'm going to have to bite the bullet. And uh, yes, I did have wicks from a previous project, but it was too thick. My wick was too thick, so I got to get a thin one, right? So we're going to have to get a, a nice bing bong of that. Probably going to have to put it on the bay, the eBay, eBay it up. We're going out to the bay, baby. I got the wicks replaced. And, oh yeah, look at that, see? It's nice and bright. It's not black. All right. So let's see how it sounds. Let's see it. Let's see how the sound, let's see the sound. <laughs> Right. Sounds a little funky because of the other addition that I made. So I took the blade. This was the scroll saw blade, right? The scrolling machine. Just kidding. That was dumb. Silly joke. Okay. Anyways, I went through and I bought some files. Some baby ones, right? With a little tiny, with a tiny booyah handle. And I figured, hey, if I do a little bit of modification, I can use the angle grinder followed by a vise so I don't mess up the filing surface and a trusty old file itself. I can get this guy on there. Kaboom. Little file. So I drilled a hole into the existing plate because I do need that to steady the surface of whatever I'm going to be doing. So let's go ahead and give a little trial around. This is just a CD case, but it's just a little piece of scrap metal. I just want to see how it goes. There you go. That's a real time. And granted, you know, like this is pretty thin metal. And from what I figure I'm going to be using this for is like maybe just, um, yeah, some aluminum pieces, some brass pieces. And maybe the occasional piece of like sheet metal and or, you know, what would have been cool was if I'd have had this before I did my, my hammers, right? Getting into here, 
would have been a lot easier. Focus into there, right? Instead of doing it all by hand, just try to stick this guy in there and then let it go to town. And again, that metal is like, you know, it's not hardened for per se. So it probably would have made a shorter work of that. But you know what? Live and learn. And now we got a new machine to do some of the work for us. All right. So that's where I'm at with that. And I'm going to call this one good to go. All right. So thanks for sticking with me. And hopefully this will give you a little idea. Try to efficiently use your time in the shop. Let me know in the comments, you know, like what could I do different? What would you put on here besides a little scroll saw? Right, I've already got one. I got four, <laughs> I think, in the in the span of time. But that was unintentional, right? I thought it was just another sewing machine. I could turn it into something cool. All right, thanks. Like and subscribe. We'll hit you up on the next one. Peace.